Hey, we got a great show for you today, the second half of our quarterback rankings. We've also got some forgotten names in fantasy football. Make sure you tune in and check it out. Hey, Foot Clan, before we get into the second half of the quarterback rankings, want to remind you about the Ultimate Draft Kit, our baby, our project. We work on this thing all offseason, keeping those rankings up to date. And he had to pull Dante Pettis from his my guys. You wanted to see where he, he landed in his rankings? You head over to the Ultimate Draft Kit, get our sleepers, our breakouts, our busts, over 100 video profiles, an app, custom scoring. This thing has got it all, ultimatedraftkit.com. Hey, this is Kalen Balaj for the Miami Dolphins, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's actually Tuesday. It's Monday. Tuesday for real. Welcome into the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Andy, Mike, and Jason back again. It's August 13th, I think. Hopefully. <laughs> How you doing, Brooks? Good. Great. <laughs> Good. Great. Welcome in. Quarterback rankings on the show today, part two. Part two. Yes. Reminds me of Hot Shots, Mike. Because that's what I was referencing. There were a handful of movies when I was uh, like a young teenager that the re the repeat watch factor was infinite. Like you could just keep it on a loop. Hot Shots Part Two was one of them. Tommy Boy was one of them. The Hot Shots movies are fantastic. If <laughs> if Charlie Sheen has brought us anything in his wild <laughs> and illustrious career. His ability to deadpan oh. in comedies, it's, it's, up, it's up near the tops. Don't call me Shirley. <laughs> well, uh, here's the quick question for the day. We're going to get it started right here, right now. Name a player that could be fantasy relevant that you really haven't mentioned before. And there are a lot of names that fit this category of players that weren't part of the narrative from February through july that are actually probably more important or valuable or uh, unmentioned uh who 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 is it for you yeah i i love this question because it forces us sometimes we want to talk about some other guys but because you know th like today we're talking the the quarterback too so there's certain names we won't get to um and this is just a name i i haven't really talked about it all this year and I think he's got an opportunity ahead of him and that's carry on Johnson <laughs> uh, no you couldn't I couldn't even get it out joke. I couldn't even get it out uh no it's Sterling Shepard <laughs> um <laughs> Sterling Shepard is a guy obviously he's I think part of the reason you're not talking about him right now is because he's dealing with the uh hand injury but he's a guy who is the incumbent one or at the very least the, he is possibly the one to step into the role vacated by Odell Beckham Jr. I think Sterling Shepard is actually a really good wide receiver. Um, and Andy, you made Christian Kirk uh, your my guy. He's always been the comp to me. I've always seen him as a Sterling Shepard player, and that's because I really like both guys. In games where uh, Odell Beckham hasn't played I mean it's it's no you know it's no surprise this Sterling Shepard has scored more points he's had over two more targets a game over 20 yards more a game I mean he does step up into that role now the first four games you start presumably without Golden Tate so I think Sterling Shepard is just he's a fantasy player that's being drafted as the wide receiver 42 right now completely unwanted you don't really care about the Giants offense and yet he could be the number one wide receiver for an NFL team that you know if you're in a PPR half point PPR league he's going to have relevance on a weekly basis and I mean honestly I don't I don't think I've even mock drafted him a single time there's just you know when you're in those rounds you're swinging for the fences and you know you you think the 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 ceiling is limited for Sterling Shepard but the reality is he will be relevant on a weekly basis. It would be nice if the Giants gave him a break because of the current hand situation. 
because he's on the field diving around with a brace on his hand. It seems like not the best idea for this is a serious, situation. Andy. I mean, this you, is training camp. You don't have Beckham. The name Cody Latimer seems to be starting on the other side of the field. I'd like to have Shepard around, but he's definitely a fantasy-relevant name. He just comes with the grimace of Giants offensive players. Right. I have two names. The first one, I'm not horsing around here. No! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mike. That's a horse it's laughing. Michael Gallup of the Dallas Cowboys. Yes. I've talked about... Well, Mike's talked a lot about the inconsistency of Amari Cooper disappearing more often than appearing. Well, there aren't a lot of other pass-catching options in Dallas, and Michael Gallup flashed at times last year. Cole Beasley is gone. Jason Witten and Randall Cobb just got out of uh, lubies. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's a good joke. My, Michael Get God. bodied, old people. <laughs> and lubies, for that matter. I and like so, loopies. Uh, it's delicious. I do, do they even still exist? I don't know. I used to get roast just, beef all the time. I just remember meeting my grandparents there at 3.50 in the afternoon for dinner. Grabbing your cafeteria tray. But the thing is, I like Kellen Moore. And, Hashtag not a sponsor. And the offense, he's going to let Dak Prescott throw the ball deep more. It's not all going to go to Amari. So if you like Kellen Moore and the offense moving forward, maybe even if, you know, who knows, if Zeke misses time, more of a dependency on the passing game, Michael Gallup's one name. And Gallup is getting training camp buzz. A lot, by the way, it. from from the beat reporters saying that Gallup looks like he is he's ready to take that second year leap. One of uh, he was one of the wide receivers I liked the most coming into the NFL. Has an opportunity. The other name, just to kind of piggyback on yesterday's show, Marquise Goodwin, NFL's sure. fastest sure. man, slotted in and locked in as a starter in San Francisco. You talk about all the different names there. My problem with the Pettis situation is simply the fact that I think the ball is going to be spread around to a bunch of different players, not named George Kittle. And it's just kind of a mess. Jordan Matthews is there and Debo Samuel and Jalen Hurd and Trent Taylor will come back. And then, you know, you have buzz on Richie James. And if Pettis doesn't establish himself, you know, who is established is Marquise Goodwin. And this is a player that had uh, just under a thousand yards in 2017 was Jimmy Garoppolo's favorite target looked great with Jimmy Garoppolo heading into last year before the injury. So fantasy relevance, when he's healthy, yes. Will he stay healthy? Probably not. But if he's healthy, you need to pay attention to him the same way you would need to pay attention to like, okay, is Deshaun Jackson going to break a game open for you? Marquise Goodwin is the fastest player in the NFL. The, the crazy part about Goodwin is coming into last fantasy season, which seems like forever ago, Marquise Goodwin was was getting a lot of hype uh, around the fantasy industry. A lot of people liked him to break out and become a very productive fantasy wide receiver. Injuries kind of derailed that. And then over this offseason with all the moves San Francisco made, drafting the, the multiple wide receivers, it and just a bad a bad buzz coming out of San Francisco about Goodwin. It seemed like it seemed like they were going to cut him yeah, and just it, move on from early, Goodwin. Early August, some of the reports yeah, they, were that he's on the roster bubble. But, and I now mean, it's like he's the only one locked into a starting, starting position. He's 28 years old, 56 receptions, 962 and 2. And then in that back half, remember that uh, the little span where Jimmy G looked really good? Right. I just think, like you said, there was a lot of buzz about him. He's not being mentioned. They're not going to force the ball to one player. Um, so I think, he, I think he's going to have relevance on certain weeks. And so the player that I'm going to bring up, it's not that I haven't brought him up, but I think I talk about him far more in the office than I do on the show. And I just want to make sure people know that I really like this player as a, a guy who can take the next step. <laughs> he's, he's part of the trio. That's Dede Westbrook, wide receiver for the Jacksonville Jaguars. He last year had nearly a 19% target share for uh, Blake Bortles. And company, so these aren't necessarily the best targets. They paid Nick Foles a giant amount of money to come down and be their quarterback. They brought in D. Filippo, who's a pass-heavy OC, which doesn't seem to jive with Jacksonville's philosophy. But there he is. They still picked him up, knowing what what he brings to the table. And Nick Foles, he targets the slot wide receiver. Like he, the, he has a great connection to that particular wide receiver on the field, and that's Didi's job for the Jacksonville Jaguars. And then you look at the rest of the depth chart for Jacksonville. Gross. Yeah, it's – I mean, 
Marquise Lee is is not likely to start this start on the active roster for the season. DJ Chark was a high draft capital pick, but it showed basically nothing. They, and then Chris Conley, Keelan Cole, and Terrell Pryor are the ones f- all fighting for a starting position. Didi Westbrook is the only one locked in, and it's Nick Foles' favorite receiving position. So I'm I'm interested in him as a potential breakout PPR guy. I'd, I don't think Jacksonville's j- offense is going to be high flying by any means, but I think that the target share. I think Didi can be one of those guys who's in the 22 percent of the market share. I don't disagree with anything you just said. So congratulations, Excellent. you we, did it. We did it. Uh, I like Didi absolutely. Couple things. Uh, we're doing a Reddit AMA today at 2 p.m. Pacific on uh, r slash fantasy football. Uh, we'll be on there for quite a while answering questions ahead of uh, your fantasy drafts. Be there. Any question. In fact, ask us anything you want. Mm. Twitter at the FF Ballers. Follow the show. You can follow Jason at Jason FFL. You can follow me at Andy Holloway. Follow Mike at FF Hitman. The website's the fantasyfootballers.com. And we appreciate you subscribing, reviewing, supporting this podcast. Let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. All right, before we talk about Andrew Luck, Judge Brooks, it's been way too long since we've done a fantasy court to open a show. Mm. Can we get that on the docket? You got it. Thank you. All right, Jim Irsay said Andrew Luck is dealing with, quote, small little bone issue. A a small little bone issue. (laughs) I feel like I'm reading a children's book. (laughs) A small little bone issue. I feel very confident he's going to find it's just a little small bonus. A way through this thing, said Ursay. Uh, this is not even the in the Achilles tendon. It's a bone. I'm not good at these things, but it's a small little bone. Hmm. Perhaps, Ursay, you should not comment <laughs> on the injury. Uh, well, it's revealing, though. There's more there than meets the eye. The the thing is. You would be considered a source. You would be considered an authority on what's happening with Andrew Luck, and you don't seem to really have the answers. I would have, I would have had those a little bit more prepared yeah, to be the authority. You know, we aside from mocking Irsay, which is just really easy. Um, <laughs> oh. it, it has been. Um, aside from that, it it's it is revealing that. You know, we've been worried about this for a little while because it's not normal for a calf strain to take the timeline that this last calf strain has, you know, has taken. And so it's 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 because it's a small little bone. Yeah, Jason. it's confirming that there is another issue here. And until until I see like uh, to me, the way that I view Andrew Luck is until he's out playing games. I don't, I don't trust it. Is he off the board? He's 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 not off the board. If he were to drop into the double digit rounds, I'm I would clearly take him at a value. I'd stack him as one of two quarterbacks. I remember playing this game with Andrew Luck two years ago. Right, but I would stack him with two quarterbacks. All that right. would be the situation where I would take him and then a Josh Allen even later and expect to play Josh Allen until otherwise uh, proven wrong. On yesterday's show it was you know, when Andrew Luck is healthy and active, he's a top five quarterback. Yeah, he's great. 100% of the time. So that's the gamble. Does his ADP drop? Does the question marks come into play? You've got to Jordan Reed that thing, man. Just get rid of it. <laughs> the small little bones? Yeah. Just play without your toes. Because yeah, things have worked out real well for Jordan Reed. Also, recently. I think it's, it's worth noting that you, if you have concerns. Just 86 it. If you have <laughs> concerns with Andrew Luck, that means you should have concerns with T.Y. Hilton. Agreed. Uh, ESPN's Adam Schefter reports Antonio Brown will return to training camp. All right. Jason, I saw you tweet out. You're still good with Antonio Brown in the second round. I am fine with Antonio Brown in the second round. He's going to play, and he's a good wide receiver. So, yeah. I'm, I mean, at, at value, you know, if he's at that 2-3 turn, I'll take him. That's where he's being drafted right now. Emmanuel Sanders said he also had tightrope surgery on a lingering ankle injury. Because that seems of the- like a terrible place to have a surgery. On a tightrope? Yeah. That's not I don't think that's what it meant, Mike. I don't I'm not an expert. Oh. I believe it means I think that's that, the type of surgery. Right. He he had a tightrope in him and they're like, What are you doing with the rope in you? Let's get that no, out. I, I actually don't think it's that either, Jason. I'm so confused. We are not good at injuries, Jay. Here's the here's the real headline. 
Vic Fangio, head coach of the Broncos, expects Achille, uh, Achilles Sanders. That's his name. <laughs> <laughs> Emmanuel Sanders to play at some point in the preseason. This is mind-blowing. Yes. He tore his Achilles on December 2nd. He's projected for more fantasy points on my wide receiver core for Denver than any other player on the team. Deonta Foreman is like, what the heck, man? How come I couldn't get that rehab? And if you listen to Sanders talk on these radio shows about the rehab process, some of the things that he was doing, uh, I believe – look, if he plays in the preseason, he looks sharp cutting on the practice field. It's wild. I'm not worried about this tightrope surgery. This was something that has a really short recovery time that he basically – it was like a Groupon. He lumped it in with the other surgery. <laughs> That's was getting, how you should do your surgery. He was getting yes. the Achilles thing, and he said, hey, I, this thing's been bothering me as well. Knock it out at the same time. Give me the twofer. And uh, I just think people should pay attention to Emmanuel Sanders. I really do. Yeah, 100%. If he is actually active in preseason, then he has to skyrocket up boards because he was killing it last year. He was so good for fantasy, and he fits the mold of what current modern-day Joe Flacco likes to do. Throw it short and so I mean uh, you know he's a great route runner I th I think he should if he's healthy like right now I don't have Emmanuel Sanders as my number one Bronco receiver but if he's out there playing in preseason he will be and should be and and you know take confidence in his health because he got in a full fist fight swinging haymakers with uh, the giant Cortland Sutton you don't do that if you're not feeling a hundred percent Emmanuel Sanders was almost the name I brought up at the beginning of the show. I, I have him at 42 right now. I don't know where you guys have him or if you've adjusted him on the expectation that he'll play. I have him at 44. Okay. So, um, Cowboys coach Jason Garrett confirmed Amari Cooper is day-to-day -day with a heel injury, more of a ligament thing, according to Cowboys insider Mickey Spagnola. So, we're monitoring him. It comes on the... Well, I don't want to use that phrase, but it comes on the back of the Gallup discussion <laughs> earlier. So Albert Breer reporting the Panthers are trying to find a backup who can, quote, ideally take a lot of Christian McCaffrey's short yardage work. Do you worry about that at all? N no. <laughs> I mean, look, if you're going to – if you uh, – we were talking about this on Slack, that if you want to have some situations where it's third and one, you're at the middle of the field – and you just want to have a guy who can bruise and and take it up the middle, which I think they have a couple guys on the roster who fit that mold already, then fine. But taking Christian McCaffrey off the field at the goal line would be – that's bad for your offense. With, if Christian McCaffrey's out there, you don't know if he's going to run or if they're going to dump it off to McCaffrey. And if you put the big man in, it, it just limits what you can do. And I think it's a bad move. Yeah, I, I think one of the interesting things when you talk about players with massive workloads that you, you, you want to lean on is what do these teams do? They So Christian McCaffrey, Todd Gurley. Um, Saquon? Zeke. Yeah, Saquon, but not so much Zeke. If, if you're a really good team, that's why I'm not bringing Saquon's name up. Okay. If you're a really good team and you have a big lead, what are you doing with those guys in those situations? Sure. That's what I want. Like, if the Panthers are better than they were last year, like I think some people project them to be, right, a healthy Cam Newton, then what happens? Does does he get those reps off when they're winning? That's, that's the question I have on some of those players. That's fair. I would project that more on to Gurley than I would Carolina. I, I, I think Carolina is a solid team, but they're, they're not the type of offense like the Rams who just – frequently blow people out yeah jj zacharyson on his podcast brought up the fact that the rams over the last two years have had more snaps with double digit leads than anybody in football there you go and those are the times when todd Gurley uh was on the field before that i can't imagine he's on the field for anymore because of the malcolm brown's health the drafting of daryl henderson but any other play if you have a team that's doing well in that capacity wants to reduce the workload something to think about that is today's news and notes. A reminder, Sleeper does not just break the latest fantasy news. They're the best fantasy platform, as simple or complex as you need. Flexible. Download it today. Before we move into our quarterback rankings part two, I want to thank today's sponsor, HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. With HelloFresh, you can get easy seasonal recipes and pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door. All you have to do is cook and enjoy Look, trying to figure out what's for dinner, that's the worst part. The cooking is fine. It's 
It's all the planning and all of those things. And HelloFresh takes that away from you. You don't have to worry about it. You just enjoy cooking. There's something for everyone from family recipes to calorie smart and vegetarian and fun menu series like Hall of Fame and Kraft Burgers. Man, do I love some Kraft Burgers. HelloFresh is flexible, fits your lifestyle. It's easy to change your delivery days, your food preferences. Skip a week whenever you need. We have all used HelloFresh. It's a fantastic service. And right now, for $80 off your first month of HelloFresh, go to HelloFresh.com slash footballers80. Enter the code footballers80. That's like receiving eight meals for free at HelloFresh.com slash footballers80, code footballers80. And we also want to thank another new sponsor today, Bombas. Look, you, you, Footland, you've heard me talk about how important socks are to me, how much I love them, how much. In, in you fact, would love a pair every day every for the rest day, of your life. And, and then donate it. But Bombas actually does something better. Every single pair Yeah, I of want the socks, one, one day old Jason socks. No, you don't want that. But what you do want is Bombas awesome socks. They've designed them with several comfort innovations to make them feel better than any other socks out there. But for every single pair of socks that Bomba sells, they donate, unlike me, they donate new <laughs> ones. Right. They donate b beautiful, wonderful socks. And right now, it's back to school time. I know at my kid's school, the socks are just, that's that's the cool thing right, right now. And Bombas has the most comfortable kid socks ever. So you can send your kids back to school with these awesome socks and get yourself some socks as well because they are so cool. They are built to be comfortable. And right now, you can visit bombas.com slash footballers to get 20% off your first purchase. That's B-O-M-B-A-S dot com slash footballers for 20% off your first purchase at bombas.com slash footballers. Quarterbacks. All right, yesterday on the show, we did the 1 through 10 at the quarterback position, consensus six-point rankings. You can see all the rankings on the website. You can see all the stat projections at ultimatedraftkit.com, including video profiles on these players. Now we're talking about kind of some of the more interesting names for a lot of fantasy owners at the quarterback position because we're talking about some late-round type of players. So let's start at number 11 by our consensus rankings. And this is a player that has been hotly debated. Oh, by yes. By Jason and Mike recently. <laughs> oh, man. Jason, look, Foot Clan, if you want to know just how ridiculous of humans we are, we had a night where we were, uh, we were in L.A. at the hotel. All the, the activities of the day were done. We're just trying to relax. Russ, Russell Wilson comes up. We engage into a very heated argument about Russell Wilson's fantasy output in the lobby of this hotel. The middle of the lobby was just basically this <laughs> yelling match for 45 minutes that ended up in a water bet. So I have bet that Russell Wilson will be a top 12 quarterback, and Mike has bet that he will not be Yes, for the first time in his career. Yep. So let's discuss Russell Wilson. Yeah, he would not be at 11 if it wasn't for Mike. That is correct, and I apologize him, for nothing. He has him at 16. Did you guys – now, mercifully, thankfully. Now, Brooks, you weren't there for that either? No, I missed that. Yeah, I was asleep. I missed out. Thank goodness for that. I'm surprised I, the hotel slept through it. I'm surprised that you weren't escorted out of the lobby if this was a 30-minute Russell Wilson shouting match at 1130 at night. That being said – was this brought up, Mike, in your arguments? The, I've, I've heard the arguments for aggression for Russell Wilson. There's a couple of different things that take place here. I'm just going to bring them to light. Last year, he finished at nine at the position, right? Kind of a, uh, indicative of low pass attempts. He was highly efficient. He did finish in that top 10, but this team is the number one running team in football or in that top category. I'm sure Baltimore will be in that category a little bit this year. But the one area of regret positive regression that I see for Russell Wilson is last season he ran for zero rush he has zero rushing touchdowns he's always run for a handful of rushing touchdowns throughout his career 
Last year, it was zero. So as a kind of counterbalance to some of the other regression numbers that you'll probably bring up momentarily, I did want to get your take on that because that's something that we normally see him find his way into the end zone. Uh, he had three in 2017. He had none last year. It, sure, he, he did have none, and I would expect him to have at least one, but we've seen for even when Russell Wilson was running the ball all the time, you have three times in his career that he just had a single rushing touchdown. The problem with the running where that's – Russell Wilson was always able to salvage fantasy because he ran, because he scrambled. But you take away passing attempts, that's fewer times that Russell Wilson can scramble and make magic happen. You saw his attempts drop from 553 into Brian Schottenheimer's offense where he threw the ball 427 times. We, we, we talk about Patrick Mahomes and his unsustainable touchdown rate – Russell Wilson was right there with him. Russell Wilson had a career touchdown percentage of 5.7. So 5.7% of his attempts turned into touchdowns, which is still very high for a quarterback. And then last year it was 8.2. He had 130 fewer attempts than the previous season and threw an extra touchdown. Like it just and and, and quarterbacks that they produce at that rate, it's not sustainable. You see them all drop in nearly dropped by about 2%. If the Seahawks, like, I'm, I'm projecting Russell Wilson for about the same amount of attempts. If, and that's what it all comes down to, is just the volume. How many times is Wilson going to throw the ball? Can Seattle be I think the as, as dominating? And, the, and they could go up. Because I don't think their defense is very good. That's, that's fair. And I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm putting my faith in Pete Carroll and the Seahawks to – Make sure that the defense is up to snuff. Okay, so, and it's just the the regression that's going to hit him. The passing volume. If you give him so last year, his outrageous eight point two percent of his attempts were touchdowns. Give him six percent. That's a fantastic season. And but that's just the two percent drop I talked about. His touchdowns dropped to twenty six. He is a a quarterback you were only thinking about streaming and would have finished at quarterback sixteen even with a with a very high touchdown percentage, just not a, a an outstanding 8% unsustainable one. So my argument on the flip side for Russell Wilson is very much based on the man and the situation he finds himself in, which is, you know, look, if the touchdowns regress, the rushing yardage will go up. If the passing attempts go up... See, it, I disagree with that. My, my point is this. On a... 16 game basis right as the Seattle Seahawks play football in the NFL he will do whatever it takes to have his team in it and win it it doesn't matter to him whether he's throwing or running or how it's happening but all we know is that right now he's had a seven year career where he's done that every single year of his career when he wasn't throwing it a lot in his rookie year he was getting it done on the ground he I mean, the Seattle Seahawks are going to be good because of Russell Wilson. He's literally never finished outside of the top 12. Three of the last five years have been a top five quarterback, and I get it. They want to run the ball. It's not the best, like, early in the offseason, I said, what was the player I wish was on a different team? So Russ. One, one of the reasons that I have a problem with your ranking with Russell Wilson, Mike, and Jason's ranking with Matt Ryan is I believe you're both ranking him at his worst-case scenario. You just brought up projecting Wilson last year over that uh, span as would have ended up as the quarterback 16. That's where you ranked him. Jason, you ranked Matt Ryan at 14, said it's all about touchdowns. To me, when you look at that ping pong ball, the more appropriate ranking for Matt Ryan is the middle ground of that touchdown. I think you ranked him worst case scenario. I think you both took the worst case scenario approach for Wilson and Ryan 16 would be a career low by six spots in fantasy. So I couldn't sure. get myself there. Even though I buy the regression, I also buy the positive regression. He could he could rush for three touchdowns again. He could uh, you know pass to the running backs more. Rashad Penny's breaking out. So the opportunity is there. I just think the offense will move and be an okay offense, but I don't like ranking him at the basement. Sure. I'm I'm just I don't buy into Russell outperforming his ADP by by any stretch. Well, Does we should, bring, nice, that, we should nice bring that up. He's a that, QB 12 right now. Right. That's what I was going to say. The nice thing is for the first time in forever, he is actually someone that I'm willing to draft. I, I assumed that after this whole argument, we were going to say, it doesn't matter. You're not going to draft him anyways. He's in the sixth round. But 
he's basically almost in the 10th round uh, on average. The 9-10 is where he's at. I'm, I'd be willing to take him there. So here's, here's a counterpoint for Russell, against Russell Wilson, even though you and I have him ranked at 7, Jay. Does Russell Wilson offer you what you actually want in a quarterback, which is the ability to be a top three guy if things go right? And that's probably not in the range of outcomes for Russell Wilson. If I draft a quarterback late, I want at least a shot at having the best guy. Or, you know, Carson Wentz, I think, has the potential of being a top three right. guy. Uh, Jared Goff, could he be a top three guy? I don't know if because of the attempts if Russell Wilson could do that. Sure. You, I, I do think you're limited on being a top three quarterback on the season. But, I mean, not in – not in a not in a per game basis from week eight through seventeen last year, which is the still the majority of the season. During that stretch, Russell Wilson was the quarterback four. Sure, so, I mean, and, that's, and we uh, haven't even brought up Doug Baldwin is is gone. And yes, I know the the jokes about Doug Baldwin last year, but Doug Baldwin did play the majority of games. Right now, the the established pass catchers for Russell Wilson is Tyler Lockett. Like he's always had to at least two go to targets. I'm not someone can step up into that role, but as of right now today, who's who's the second best pass catcher? DK on that? DK uh Big Calfs? Yeah. <laughs> is it Metcalf? I don't know. Is Rashad, it Jaron, is Rashad it Shad Penny, Jerron Brown? I'm David talking Moore. wide receiver. Sure, like, sure, sure. Yeah. Um no, if you want to see the rem the remainder of the Russell Wilson debate, you can uh, go to the hotel lobby at one six four. The pay per view will event will never be stop. <laughs> Number twelve, Jameis Winston. I am at fourteen. Jason at eleven. Mike at twelve. Yeah, uh, he's being drafted as the quarterback thirteen. The majority of fantasy football prognosticators they see the potential and upside of Winston because we've seen it many times in small samples. However, since 2015, he's finished 13th, 16th, 22nd, and 22nd because he's either not on the field or he's very inconsistent. You get games like week 15 or week 8 last year where he's single digits. I love Bruce Arians. I love what Bruce Arians has done to fantasy quarterbacks throughout his career. At a minimum, the average depth of target for every quarterback he's touched Big Ben, Andrew Luck, Carson Palmer, who, by the way, would have won the MVP award if he hadn't torn his ACL right. under Arians. It's, uh, it goes up. So Bruce will be saying to Jameis, throw that ball. And Jameis the rest will is oblige. Up, the rest is up to Jameis. Yeah, he is very tough because every single year we come into the draft season – and you pull the Jean-Claude Van Damme, as we call it, and you look at those splits, and they're always there's always an incredible patch of fantasy production for Jameis. Last year, once he got his job back, and yes, he had to get his job back. <laughs> week 11, and he had to get his job back from Ryan Fitzpatrick as well. Week 11, after that, he was averaging 260 yards and two touchdowns a game. He was the quarterback 10 in points per game. And on top of that, it was a he had a thirteen to four touchdown to interception ratio, which is very, very non Jameis. It's not a huge sample size for us to go off of, but the breakout potential for Jameis Winston, it it can't look, be ignored. Look, if you just combine Jameis Winston and Ryan Fitzpatrick right. last year and just say the Tampa Bay quarterbacks. They would have been a top five quarterback last year. Maybe Jameis needs a beard. And, and Fitzpatrick isn't there. There's no competition. This is Winston's job. And even when he tries to lose it, which will happen a couple games, he's not going to be able to lose it because there's nobody behind him that can step up. I think the offense is going to be good. Uh, and, and my hope. So early in the offseason, I was extremely bullish on Winston because I, I – I see a world where he can really step up and be a top five fantasy quarterback this year. I worry because in reality, we've just seen so many boneheaded plays, so many things that, you know, you just go, oh, why does he do these things that just cost him throwing picks, you know, while he's getting sacked? Just let me 500 <laughs> it yes. just tosses it up. And you don't see that from any good quarterback. But the one thing that really does give me a little bit of hope that with Arians and, you know, as he matures, that he could become a more reliable NFL quarterback is the is his age. 
Like, I know he's been in the league a long time, and we said, well, we've seen him, but he's he's still 25. For a quarterback, that is so young. Baker Mayfield is 24, right? Like, right. he's a year older than Baker, so he's still a young guy that is improving and hopefully maturing. And so, I, you know, with the weapons of, of Mike Evans and O.J. Howard and um, – I think the weapons are thin. I think you get one injury and you got a problem on that team. The, while the show's been going on, Godwin pulled up with a hamstring injury in camp. He made no! it. Made it. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me exhale. He made it back out on the field later on in practice. There you go. But tell and me, then he left again, Jason. No! <laughs> tell uh, tell Fantasy me. Fantasy football Twitter could not handle. No. Chris Godwin missing time. But but tell me how you feel about a team that lost. I mean, Adam Humphreys, say whatever you want about him. Pronounce Massive target share last year in Tampa. O.J. Howard hasn't stayed healthy. If Chris Godwin goes down, all of a sudden you're looking at the offense through a different lens of leaning on Justin Watson and Brashad Perryman and players that enter into Arian system they do struggle especially with interceptions to begin their career Palmer was not a good quarterback under Arians in his first uh, handful of games pretty much the first full season through a ton of interceptions I don't think it's going to happen for him this year you guys have him ranked a little bit higher but I think that makes the case for him you're you're welcome to yeah, I mean, counterpoint the, the, those things. the counterpoint would just be that, you know, if injuries happen to any team, it's going if TY Hilton goes down and Andrew Luck is out there, it's going it's going to hurt. And I think that it could be addition by subtraction. If you're telling me that more targets go to OJ Howard, Chris Godwin, and Mike Evans versus going to Adam Humphreys or long bomb shots that he can't connect with on DJX, I, I think that, you know, I obviously if Mike Evans goes down, it's gonna hurt. Jameis right but that's true of any quarterback it just feels a little thinner there because Perryman and Watson haven't established themselves and you just lost D Jackson Humphreys you didn't add right sure yeah so, no uh Kyler Murray at 13 Mike is the most bullish on Kyler he's got him at 10 Jason at 16 I'm at 13 state your case for Kyler Murray Mike rushing <laughs> running running the ball like uh, I talked about Kyler Murray on a breakout show earlier in in the off season, but I just I took a look at quarterbacks who were drafted very high, and which implies that a team was bad the year before it because they had that early round pick. But quarterbacks that rush like Cam Newton, Robert Griffin, Vince Young, Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen, they produce for fantasy on bad teams because of the way that the scoring works. And Kyler Murray is one of those guys. He's coming into the NFL his his rookie year last or sorry rookie his his last year he put up over a thousand rushing yards in college and he matched that with over forty three hundred passing yards. Kyler Murray is he is a an elite college quarterback. That production is is absolutely ridiculous. And you pair him with a college friendly offense with Cliff Kingsbury. And I think that it's as long as Kyler Murray is on the field, he's going to be running, and he he can succeed in the passing game as well. But the the why he won't bust to me is because of the running, and he will be running with and that offensive line. Running. We saw it in the preseason already. He didn't go downfield. He didn't you know run the way he's going to run in the real season. But you saw there's times where the offensive line is a sieve, lets people through. And unlike a Josh Rosen that can't get out of the pocket or make a play, Kyler turns on those little burners, and he's out of the pocket and on the run. So I, I do think there's enough history of highly drafted top 10 NFL draft picks that can rush on bad teams, and they don't even have to be good at throwing the ball, who are great fantasy options. We you combine it with the pace of play and uh, his accuracy that you know has been raved about so far in the preseason, uh, the training camp, OTAs. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I've got Kyler at 16 right now. He is still a rookie. You know, I don't, I, I've got him down for 24 passing touchdowns, which isn't fantasy gold, but I just, I still feel like it's too low. I, I you know, you, you saw Russell and Dak and these guys that kind of have this dual threat ability. They came out as the rookies and they were top 12 quarterbacks. You're paying too much for Kyler Murray right now. That yeah. is true. I mean, they, so that we took him in our juju Smith Schuster live celebrity draft. 
because we wanted a share of Kyler Murray, and we took him in the what eleventh or twelfth round. Yeah, it we got him good. We but, got him below. ADP. But he's being drafted in the eighth round now, guys. I mean, yeah. his, his ADP in May was the twelfth round. His ADP now is eight oh five, eight oh four uh, in recent days. So you're paying a lot for Kyler Murray right now, which is the main issue that I have. I mean, you. I like Cam Newton and Jared Goff a whole lot more than Kyler Murray this season. Both of those guys are going rounds later than Kyler, so I won't end up with Kyler in any draft, assuming that the draft goes near ADP. Starts the year against Detroit, Baltimore, Carolina, Seattle. Three-fourths of those games at home, which is a nice start for his career. Will be very interesting to see what happens. Not a lot of, I mean, outside of Christian Kirk and the uh, fellow Luby's veteran, Larry Fitzgerald, not a lot of established pass catchers in Arizona. No, it's going to need to lean on DJ. That Baltimore Week Two matchup is very interesting because they're one of those teams that you know sometimes you talk about in like a fight. How do you prepare for this fighter if you don't have someone that can uh, emulate their style? Baltimore gets to face Lamar Jackson uh, and and actually see some guy with this kind of speed, so they might be able to bottle up the run in that Week Two. I think they should just have a gentleman's agreement that. The offense is only quarterback runs, like on both sides of the ball during that matchup. It's Lamar versus Kyler. Who can run for more yards? That would end in blood. <laughs> <laughs> that would, that would, I think they would not. The that's NFL not PA a gentleman's is, agreement. Even though this is a recording, the NFL PA somehow heard that and has asked us <laughs> to stop recording. <laughs> Big Ben comes in at 14 in our consensus rankings. In some horribly morbid twist of fate, I'm the highest on Big Ben. I'm the lowest on the Steelers, mm -hmm. and I'm the highest on Big Ben. Mike and I noticed this yesterday in the office. And, we and were I like, chuckled what? heartily. Yes. Well, if you, I mean, we the way we do our stats, we project our these players and what they've done last year: 5,100 yards, 34 touchdowns, 16 picks, 675 passing attempts. They're still going to throw the football. I don't think that James Conner is going to have the first half of the year he had last year. Uh, I think they're going to need to throw the ball. He ended up at 12, guys. Yeah. I mean, Well, last year he was number one in attempts, number one in yards. However, it was – He did finish as the quarterback three, by the way. It, this was only the second time that he's thrown the ball over 600 times. However, both of those times he led the league in passing yards. A shocker. Uh, he ha he does have a very stable touchdown percent, right around five. So I I feel like you know what you're gonna get from Big Ben. It's just, do you know without Antonio Brown though? I think you do. I th I think that that Ben is a is a capable quarterback, and my belief in Juju to assume that role as the number one. And Big Ben had years where it was just Antonio Brown. Like, yeah, he was the offense. I think Juju can be the offense. You're gonna need to find. Whether it's Moncrief, Deontay Johnson, um, James Washington, who had a good preseason game one, you're going to need to find somebody to step up and be the you know second man mm. to Juju. There's there's a guy who can dance. Yeah, Van, Vance will play his role, but he's got to stay healthy too. So, I'm actually a little surprised for how much you guys love the Steelers that you would, and for Big Ben being 10th in 2017 and 3rd in 2018, that you guys would have him quite – well, quite it's, so far it, down, and maybe it's more preferential who you like elsewhere than it is being down on Big Ben. One hundred percent, that's part of it because you know I there's about twenty two quarterbacks that I'm I would be really happy with this year in in a draft. So being sixteen means he's ahead of other people, um, you know that that I like less. But the last two years when he was ten and three, he had both A B and Juju. You know, the right. years prior to that, when it was A.B. still lighting the league on fire, he was the 21st and the 18th. Granted, he didn't play 16 in either of those. So it's really one of those kind of hedged bets where you're saying uh, he's still a good quarterback. He's still going to put up a lot of numbers, but he has lost to Antonio Brown and usually doesn't play 16 in his career. He's going to throw the ball fewer times to me. I, I, I took away 90 attempts. Also starts it. the year in New England. Game one. So look for Big Ben on waivers. I sure. mean, that's the truth. If you want to start, he, he may be in that streaming category and being drafted as QB 16. 15 and 16 in our consensus rankings. 15 is Josh Allen. Josh Stallion himself. Lamar Jackson. Excellent. Lamar Jackson at 16, both rookies last season. I watched uh, every preseason snap of both of these players yesterday. Well, 
some people eh, on Twitter, one person thought I looked um, not my best yesterday. Oh, you were, oh, yeah. Well, I mean, the word you're searching for is haggard. That is what the word I'm searching for. That's not the word they used, but that is the word I'm searching for. Delightfully haggard. I was under the weather yesterday. I came in, did the show, went home, went to sleep, slash watched film in bed. Watched Josh Allen, watched Lamar Jackson. Both of these players have been highly criticized for what they can do with their arms, highly praised for what they can do on the ground with their legs. I talked yesterday about Lamar Jackson. A much higher percentage of his rushing yardage came on designed run plays than Josh Allen. But if you watch the Buffalo Bills offense, I will promise you something. Josh Allen is going to run all year long because he's going to have to run all year long, and he's capable of doing it. This offensive line is not going to give him time in the pocket. They have added a couple of weapons, Cole Beasley, John Brown. So how bullish are you on Allen? He's the player that he ranks 17 here for, for me in six-point leagues. He's seven in four-point leagues. It is, th- both- Please go look at these rankings on the website because if you're in a four-point league, it's a big difference. We're breaking these down by six-point leagues, and it's a monstrous difference for both Allen and Lamar Jackson. Yeah, I mean, I, I believe that I, I like both guys because quarterback rushing is broken, as I always share. Um, but the the reality is, I think that you've got a guy in Josh Allen who is able to take the hits. You worry about the frame and the utilization of Lamar Jackson. That's one thing, but it also helps around the goal line. You want to power in a touchdown, yeah, Cam Newton style, Cam Newton style, and you saw that the you know the. During the back half of the year, when when Josh Allen came back from injury and was the number one fantasy quarterback over that back quarter of the season, a lot of that had to do with his rushing touchdowns, and then that's where I give him the edge. Plus, if you have to talk about the passing, Andy, you said you watched every snap. Uh, obviously, we we all did, but you rewatched them again, and you you saw some horrible throws mixed in with a lot of good throws. You you saw the same thing with Lamar Jackson too, where it was like, oh man, he looks like he's got it, but then when they miss, gross, they miss. When they miss, they really want to miss. I mean, that's it, what I saw. More good than bad for both, but when they missed, it was like, hey, guy in the front row, do you want the ball? He really wanted to get it to him, so he squinted his eyes, closed them, <laughs> and chucked it as hard as he could. And unfortunately, Look Lamar, yeah. you should you should keep your eyes open when you pass. But the weapons are better now. Like, what happened for the future is good for Lamar Jackson. What happened for now is good for Josh Allen. Because I don't think that an injured Hollywood Brown and a rookie Boykin are really the answers for Lamar Jackson right now. Whereas Cole Beasley and John Brown, these are two veteran, proven separators. They can get open, and I think that's going to help Josh Allen. So I that's why I have Josh Allen ahead of Lamar Jackson. All right, Dak Prescott, Mitch Trubisky, 17 and 18. Okay. Well, Dak, Dak, I am optimistic about the offense improving. I also, I'm so bewildered by Jason's ranking of Dak Prescott uh, because he loves to mention that Russell Wilson has never finished outside the top 12. Uh, I say to you, good sir, mm-hmm. Dak Prescott has never finished outside the top 12, and you ha- you don't have him in the top 20. I hate my Dak Prescott ranking. Me I, too. I hate it. We, we were talking about this yesterday. This is one of those things where I, I, I looked at the guys ahead of him. I looked at his stats. There's only 10 guys that can finish in the top 10, right? And that's the problem with... Checks out. Math checks out. <laughs> that's the problem with having, you know, 20 great players here. And this is why we bring up that you don't need to draft a quarterback early. I don't know if we shared the stat on yesterday's episode about the fact that usually there are over 40 different quarterbacks every year that have a top 12 week. Well, there are only 32 teams, right. and that's not like an outlier. That's every single year. Sometimes it's up near 50. There's so many good options. I would be thrilled to have Dak Prescott at the end of my draft. I, I stack my roster elsewhere. So, you know, my ranking of him at 21 is not indicative of, of uh, me thinking that he is bad. In fact, if you look at what happened after Amari Cooper got there, Dak got a lot better. He was a top six quarterback the whole second half of the season once he had Amari Cooper. So, I mean, maybe I need to go in and adjust these rankings again, take another look. 
I don't have much bad to say about Dak and his rushing touchdowns, the mark of the beast, every <laughs> single year, six, <laughs> six, six touchdowns. Goodness gracious. <laughs> Stunning analysis. Yeah. I mean, is that it, Jerry Jones? <laughs> that's just he's got the skill set, right? You sell out to stop the run to stop Zeke, and you've got a mobile quarterback. Like, oh, see you yeah, later. I mean, the, the the quarterback option, Brooks. Um, you're a humongous Dallas Cowboys fan. Uh, did did you learn anything from this forty million dollar request reported yesterday? Alleged, alleged forty million dollar request about Dak. I mean, I hope. I hope you're not planning on applying any of his philosophies with your own arrangements here. Nah, just ignoring it. Okay. The forty million is alleged, but it it's been confirmed by multiple sources that he was offered and rejected a thirty million dollar a year average, which is insane. That would make him top what, five. This won't happen. This is speculation and a waste of time. What if Dak, Amari, I love it, and Zeke just band together like we've got another Miami Heat situation, and they just float to another team. Because they're oh, all going to be word. strong arm in their way. Now, they, Zeke can't be a free agent, so it doesn't really work, but they, don't care about it. Up, they call up Miami. They, I mean, oh, they, they go full heat. They, they go, go to full. Miami. I'm taking my talents <laughs> to South Beach. <laughs> Dak Prescott, behind Jared Goff and Cam Newton are my current favorite late-round guys. But if there is a scenario where I miss out on them, Dak Prescott is, is the th – is third in line for that list for me. All right, 18 is Trubisky, 19 Kirk Cousins, 20 Phillip Rivers, uh, 21 through 30 you can see at thefantasyfootballers.com on the website. I, I kind of want to get into a few mailbag questions today, so do you guys have anything you want to, to bring forward? I mean, the word around camp on Mitch Trubisky right now, take it for what you will, hasn't looked good. Hmm. It's almost as though he's struggling again with, Accuracy, consistency, some of those things. The, the Last one, year, busted 57% of the time. Only time he didn't bust was when he was great, when Jason <laughs> pooped on him. Yeah, whenever I said That's that he's going to be terrible. Week four. Yeah, so here's here's the thing. He he got injured, if you remember, yes. about halfway through Shoulder the season. Injury. And he stopped running. We talk about Lamar Jackson. We talk about Josh Allen. We forget how much Trubisky runs or at least did before that injury. So I expect him to continue to do that. You talk about this. Do, do you know, so the first half of the season last year, right? Like if you're if you're a good running quarterback, you're going to be like 300 yards. The first half of the season, he was on pace for 677 yards. That's insane. That's why he was so good for fantasy. The second half of the season, he was on pace for 286 after the injury. So it's one of those things where that's where I'm curious about what, Trubisky are we going to see which one and I think I think that it was injury caused in which case I believe he's going to run again that's why I have him higher in my rankings I still don't believe in him as a future franchise quarterback but in fantasy for Matt Nagy as a mobile quarterback I'm fine with Trubisky and my my last note for these quarterbacks is Kirk Cousins is being absolutely left for dead it, he was for, for, one of the only guys that actually performed 280p last year. Right. He's he was been left for dead for fantasy because of the the ending of the season, uh, the the perceived offensive switch, and I I don't think he should be left in the absolute doldrums for fantasy football. Kirk Cousins can succeed uh, as a as a lower volume type of player with with the receivers that he has, and I mean Dalvin Cook is not going to score everything for the Minnesota Vikings. And I think they're going to continue to be a, at least a solid offense at worst. So it, not that I love him as a top 12 guy, but I, I don't think he should be completely overlooked like he is being now. Invested a first round pick on offensive line as well, trying to keep him upright, keep him ready to go. Let's do some mailbag. 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 <laughs> it's been a little while. If you have a question for the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, this show is all about you, helping you win your league, helping you be the best commissioner, uh, have the most fun in your league. We want 2019 to be the best year you've had playing fantasy football. Send in your questions on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Click the Submit a Question button. Or you can dial our voicemail hotline with a question, 302-464-TFFB. Lucas in Toronto. Oh, bunch your Lucas. <laughs> he says, hey, guys, love the show. Quick question. Would you draft two superstars on the same team like Robert Woods and Cooper Cup? 
specifically to use one of them as trade bait? Uh, no, but a yes to the first part. No to the second part. I'm fine. Look, if there's two superstars, right? If you're talking about, uh, okay, I can somehow get Michael Thomas and Alvin Kamara. Yes, grab them. But I'm never going to draft a guy specifically to trade them. I think that's one of those things that you, you see newer players do a lot. I, I know we, we've had it in our leagues before where it was like, I'm going to hoard all the defenses and trade them. People will come calling. And it's like, good eh, luck. Doesn't happen. You certainly don't want to reach in that scenario. If you are going to eventually trade a player, sure, whatever. But right. not for the purpose. I like would draft said. the two of them to play on my fantasy football team. All right, Jordan in Vancouver, oh. Oh. Washington. Vancouver, Washington. <sighs> would you trade? Mike was just I was ready. itching for another bonjour. Would you trade Melvin Gordon for Devonta Freeman and a 2020 first-round pick? Um, wow, that's a great question. I would. Yes, I would. The 2020 Melvin Gordon was. Uh, are we talking in context of dynasty or redraft? I would. Ha I, so I am talking in context. Oh of dynasty. well, the the bold header of the question is dynasty trade. Oh, yeah. okay. I mean, All right. The difference between Devonta Freeman and Melvin it. Gordon this year, as of now, we don't know how many games Melvin Gordon is going to miss. Uh, I know he was trolling you on Twitter, Andy. Yeah, that no. was a really quick reply, by the way. I posted that I, I wondered if uh, Gordon was hinting at his return because he had posted this IG post about Thursday Night Football. Well, he did, it was about TNF, right. which probably had nothing to do with Thursday Night Football. But it just happened that their game on Thursday Night Football was Week 10 and that if he returned on that date, he would still accrue a season and be a free agent. And he very quickly replied <laughs> <Yes>. and <laughs> yeah. said, uh, my real followers know what what's up. Let us all know. Yeah, where are your real yeah. followers? We would love Melvin. to know. Just yeah. let us know what's up. But um, the 2020 draft class is loaded. Uh, wide receivers and running backs specifically are great. I think if you can get a good running back like Devonta Freeman, the shelf life of these guys is, at running back is so quick and short that, yeah, now you still have a good guy in Devonta Freeman and you get to draft uh, an air replacement. Did you realize Airplane. that Devonta Freeman is only one year older? I was about to say it. Yeah. 26-year-old Melvin Gordon, 27-year-old Devonta Freeman. Reports, hype train, Dan Quinn, best camp of Freeman's career, has the number one job locked up, and guess what? You don't miss him for eight weeks. How is Devonta Freeman not in my my guys? I'm very, Seriously. I'm very disappointed in myself. Well, we got a fantasy MVP show coming up. Okay. You can just change I'll your my guys willy nilly anyway. <laughs> yeah, look, I've heard that. I didn't realize that was true. By the way, I, it is important in preseason in times like this that you you want to react. You don't want to overreact. That's generally what you want to do. You want to pay attention, react, not overreact. Um, so, well, I'm excited for week two. You can see a lot of the starters out there on the field a little more. Jack in Philadelphia. I know you guys always preach late round quarterback. That's generally how I try to draft as well. However, in the case where you draft the Devontae Adams or DeAndre Hopkins early, would you consider drafting Rodgers or Watson in the fourth or fifth to build the stack as an effective Mahomes-Hill uh, type of comp from last year? I, the, I the stack is fun to have, but I do not reach to have that. Like It's it's fun on Sunday when they connect on that long bomb and you are you see that point total jump up 30 points off of one play. That's... That feels good inside, but a, the the points are still the points, and you're replacing them with I with a late round quarterback. I love having a stack, but when you do it just for the stack, you're you're hurting your roster. It's it's like grabbing a guy to trade. Grab the players that make sense. And and last year, Andy, you had uh, Pat Mahomes, Tyreek Hill, right? Yeah, you had that stack. Which everybody who had that stack, I was, had that stack in two leagues. Was super happy because you were torching the league. But the problem with the stack is, what happens if they both have a bad game, and it comes in week 15, and even though you were clearly the point lead, you fall out of the playoffs because the stack just didn't work one week, which is all it needs in the, fl in the yeah, playoffs. Yeah, well, and, and that one play is going to be really fun for you, but then when you look at your running back two spot or your wide receiver two spot or your flex, and you've got a nobody playing there getting you zero points because you traded that depth for the, uh, right. the early round quarterback, you're going to be in trouble. If so. you want to stack... Look at the late round quarterbacks that you like. You know what I mean? Like, right. like say, who do I really want? I want Jared Goff late. Okay, so I want to make sure I get one of Woods or or Cooks or Cup. And then I, yeah, 
That's a great point. I would love to have Wentz and then DJX in my flex or something yeah, like that. Yeah, that's nice. That's a very fun thing that I'm not sacrificing for. Uh, we want to thank today's studio sponsor, everyday studio sponsor. <laughs> it's Pristine Auction. Yesterday, Whoa. a Tyler Boyd jersey sold for $40.95, but not just a Tyler Boyd jersey. This one was autographed by Tyler Boyd. You know what else got hmm. sold on Pristine Auction, fellas? Oh, what? I saw. Did we secure something? An autographed Kyler Murray, wait, wait, Kyler wait. Murray jersey. Did we get it? That now belongs to the fantasy footballers. Yes, fantastic. <laughs> Mike I, made it his mission yesterday to secure one. I knew we missed out on one the day before, and then I got one yesterday. But that's the great thing about the auction, right? You yep. just uh, hundreds, hundreds of new ones. daily auctions. Just make a bid at the price you want, and then you don't pay if you don't get it. PristineAuction.com. Use the code Ballers. Thanks for tuning in, supporting the show. Check out UltimateDraftKit.com for all of your draft day needs, and we'll be back tomorrow with a show. Yeah. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.